Good morning, I am Jeff Bice Cars and this is my Volvo 850 2 litre 10 valve that I picked up from Devon on Friday. I've already missed one train, which has delayed me by more than an hour. 150 miles and three hours home to get to the pub. Very clean looking car. Whoa, crap. Genuinely, I just fell up a bank. I have a three hour journey home and I don't have a fuel gauge. Hundred and fifty one point seven miles and I've averaged only thirty point nine miles to the gallon. But I have not been hanging around because I'm going to the pub. Now this is an interesting one because it looks fantastic, but if you know your Volvos, you'll know that this is the two litre 10 valve automatic, which is the slowest Volvo 850 you can buy. However, it was very cheap at 650 pounds and it's only done 85,000 miles. It's got really good service history and it's a very, very clean car. I love it. I also love that the number plate says Jeffel. I bought it back 165 miles on Friday night and I thoroughly enjoyed my drive. Yes, when you're accelerating, it's not the world's fastest car. However, once you're up to motorway speeds, it cruised absolutely beautifully. Okay, so I did my car check earlier on with Vehicle Smart. There's a link in the comments for you to get your own vehicle check. So it's an 852 litre GLT automatic 10 valve, 126 horsepower. Should we put it on a dyno and find out how much it's still got? We'll do that later in the week. 0 to 16, 12.5 seconds. So it's not exactly gonna light the world on fire, this one, with a top speed of allegedly 121. Urban miles per gallon, 21.6. Extra urban, 42.2. Combined, 33.6. I got about 30 out of it on the run home from Devon. But as I said in my video on Friday night, I was desperate to get to the pub and I was not hanging around. Um, it cruises uh, exactly 70 miles an hour absolutely beautifully but it feels planted it feels solid everything feels like it's really well put together no knocks and bangs i mean for 650 quid i would expect everything to be falling apart but it just feels great so first registered october 96 so it's 27 years old six owners so scott who i had it from had it from 2017 to 2023 so he owned it six years Prior to that, August 2010 to July 17. So that chap owned it seven years. So two fairly long-term owners. Serviced, and this is interesting because this car came from Devon. It was actually delivered, I think, by Lex Volvo in Erdington, in Birmingham, up the road. And then the servicing, um, so we've got services at 7,013 and 16,000, all by Lex Volvo in Erdington. 22,000, 28,000, 38,000 are all done by Asgard Volvo, in Wolverhampton. Then for 40,000 and 46,000, we moved to MB Autos in West Bromwich. And then 50, 54 and 57,000 were at Heritage Motors in Briley Hill. So this car has basically come from the areas that I grew up, and yet I found it in Devon. Then uh, we've got services at 68,000, 74,000 and 77,000, but it's not noted as to where those services were. And then Scott said, I bought this as a reliable stopgap car six years ago, but we still have it due to its reliability. Winter packed sunroof, first thing I did was a full PCV replacement using genuine Volvo parts and a full service. So you'll know if you know your Volvos, the PCV system is a real uh, nightmare for oil leaks. So if all of that's been done, happy days. That can be an expensive thing if it goes wrong and it's a bit of work to get that done. Yeah, they do like to leak oil all down the back of the engine. Uh, interior is beige with cloth and leather seats, and it's lovely. Dash top has lifted slightly, only a little bit, uh, at the heat event like they all do. Yes, they all do. This is not your usual neglected, battered up 850. I have to agree. The front wings have rusted where they always do, hence the tape. Yes, as I've said. Rest of the body is rough free, bar a few parking dings and a bit of faded lacquer. Serviced annually by me, the engine is a peach, sewing machine quiet. Fully agree, Scott. It's a lovely, lovely car. You were great to deal with. You were super accommodating. And I'm really glad you sold the car to me because I love it. Auto box shift perfectly. Winter economy and sport functions work as they should. Drives lovely and smooth. And has four matching Riken Michelin budget tires. And the rears are brand new. Just been MOT'd. And the tester commented on how rust free the underside was. So it's got years left in it. However, 
The ABS light came on driving home and the fuel gauge has stopped working. So selling us spares or repair basically due to those two faults. Any inspection welcome and encouraged. I am hiding nothing. Lovely, genuine seller. Beautiful sale. I had a nice run down on the train to the bottom of the country and then a lovely drive home in a really nice car. The boot struts on the rear have failed. So it's got auto close. Automatically closing rear door. But again, that's a very common Volvo 850 problem. The dog guard has fallen down. Uh, if you want to buy that dog card, let me know because I don't want it. But I have a little plan for this unwanted, very slow two litre. I think if we remove the catalytic converter, we can free up some of the breathing from the engine. So maybe we can get a little bit more performance out of it that way. But also I'm taking this car to a show on Thursday night with my friend who has just bought a very nice Vauxhall Nova. And I wanna do something to this car to get a little bit more attention for it. So I do have a bit of a plan as to what we're gonna do. So give me three days and I'm gonna turn this slightly neglected car into a show car. Although saying that, Look how clean it is. I've just had it clean, by the way. But what a straight, nice car. We've got the standard Volvo 850 rust on the front wings. But other than that, just a really genuine car. It's lovely. Like, talk about Bangonomics. 650 quid. So, yeah, your car tax on this is going to be 300 odd pound a year. And it's only going to do sort of 30 miles to the gallon. But from a maintenance point of view, this car's going to last forever. So, although you may spend your money on the fuel and on the road tax, in terms of actual running costs for the car, this is extremely cheap motoring, and it's something that you can put on display at a car show. Look at it, it's blooming lovely. I think this is one of the best colors for an 850, this turquoise pearl. And um, the beige interior is just superb. Sunroof, heated seats that don't work, electric windows, automatic gearbox with winter mode and economy mode, uh, stereo, Volvo premium stereo, it doesn't work. Um, heaters, coolers, all that sort of stuff. And unlike my Volvo, the dashboard glove box door isn't completely stuck closed. How do you get a glove box open when it's managed to close itself and will not be opened? So let's turn it into a show car and we'll hang on to this one for a little bit, but that does cause me some problems because my fleet is growing. I've got two Volvo 850s, an SLK and a Fiesta, and I don't want to get rid of any of them. It's gonna cause me some parking problems. However, all my cars are insured with cherished vehicle insurance services on a multi-car policy. I even have the wife's car on there as well. So my car, the red Volvo and the wife's BMW are both on there for work use. Everything else is social, domestic and pleasure. I think I can do some commuting with them as well. And I also have breakdown cover to boot. Uh, funny story about the breakdown cover. Last week with my red Volvo 850, I went to collect some wheels out of my mum's garage where I was storing them because I'd sold them. Jumped out of the driver's side, left the key in the ignition, my phone on the passenger seat, shut the driver's door, went round to the boot to open the boot to put the wheels in and the whole car locked itself. So there I was at my mum's house, locked out of my own car. I could see my phone on the passenger seat. The keys are in the ignition. Thankfully, the car's not running. My mum's not in. I walked down to my cousin's house. She's not in. I had to knock on the neighbor's door to use the phone to get the AA out to come and break into the car. Funny story. I was determined to smash the back window. I had visions of leaving the back window, or well, removing the rear window and running it like a pickup truck with surfboards hanging out the roof. But the AA man was absolutely determined. He said he's only lost two windows in 14 years. And sure enough, in about 10 minutes, we had got into the car using the old uh, coat hanger trick. Um, but it was great fun and he was great fun and we enjoyed breaking into the car and he said he would have been much faster breaking into the car if he hadn't let me have a go. But I was glad that we did it in the end and it was a very funny story and the moral there is, um, I don't know, maybe have a spare key, don't lock yourself. I don't know why that happened. Have you got an 850? Has that happened to you? Yeah, I pulled the handle on the boot and the whole car just deadlocked itself. Very strange, but it made for quite a funny video. So there you go, that's my 850. Um, a much better car than I perhaps was uh, expecting due to the price, but it's nice when you're pleasantly surprised. Now I must go and drop it with Russell, and we're gonna turn this car into a show car. So check back on the channel in a few days time, and we'll see what we do to it.